I end every clinic I, I do now with a little two minute on just this. And it's where I think you can improve, depends on your, 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 your talent level, but where you can improve, I mean, two, three or four shots today like that is around the green. And I'm not gonna get into really technique too much, because first of all, it'll bore the hell out of you. And second of all, you're not gonna change. I don't want you changing today. But just as, as, if I can get you on the green in your first effort, just get you on the green in the first try, I wanna improve your game overnight. So first of all, I wanna say before I even get started, what a beautiful place this is. This is fantastic. This is my, when I'm asked where my favorite places in the world are, to play golf, Piners is always one, two, or three. But if I had a week to play before the good Lord took me, I'd want to come here just because of the atmosphere, the golf, the hotel, everything around here is golf and it's fantastic. So I'm glad you're all here and able to enjoy it. I used to come here when I was in college a lot on those long weekends, if you know what I mean. And uh, we'd play some golf, but we had the North South here growing up and we had the Piners Intercollegiate we would play here every year. So it's kind of been in my blood for a long time. So. Anyway, the point of all of this today is one thing, get the ball on the ground faster, okay? When I first came on tour, I wasn't as good as I should have been from this area around the green because I took too much loft of a club. And an old pro, Don January, who's a dear friend of mine, gave me the best piece of advice I ever got one time. He said, Curtis, when you start choking your guts out, get the ball on the ground quicker because there's more room for error. And we all get nervous around the greens. The older I get, the more nervous I get. But unless you have a bunker or rough or something to carry, but the point is, get the ball on the green. I made the joke here a moment ago, is I, the older I get, the more and farther from the green I putt. I do. And if I had it all to do again, if I didn't have deep rough between my ball and the putting surface, I'd putt it more if I had, you know, the conditions are so good now around the golf courses because your, your, your law averages are so much better. So anyway, uh, from this, if I was right here to that pin right there, I have a seven iron. Now how many would take a seven iron from here or how many would take a sand wedge? A lot of sand wedges, right? To, that one, to this one that's 40 feet from me. Okay, putter's good answer, seven iron's good answer. But the, the reason I do this, or my judgment of this, is that I take the club that will just on its own hit, just all I want to do is clear that fringe and on its own momentum run to the hole. So from here, it might be a six iron if I have to chip and, and can't putt. So my point is, if it's here, it'd probably be an eight iron. But right in this area, it's probably right a seven iron. So I'm going to carry just the fringe and it should roll right to the hole. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so much easier than taking a lofted club. And I see it time and time again where there's too much loft. Now think about it. If you take too much loft or take a lofted club, I'll take a 58. You have to judge the distance you carry it, the spin you put on it, the firmness of the green, all the above. The shot has to be hit damn near perfect. See, it's just, it's so much tougher shot, so much tougher. So get the ball on the ground faster. Please ask questions, just yell them out whenever you have one. Uh, technique, I don't want to do too much on, but I grip the, the, the chipper or the, the, the club like a putt, okay? I have the reverse overlap. My hands work better as a unit that way, and I go about it like a putt, almost. I don't, you know, if I hit that longer shot, I, my feet are uh, farther apart, I'm farther from the ball, I have more cock, more swing, because I have to carry it farther. But on this seven iron, I'll grip it like a putt, I'll sit up to it similar to a putt, a little farther from it, ball probably a little farther back, and just want to hit down on the ball. The problem most players have, they try to help the ball in the air too much. You got to hit it with a descending blow, just like every shot in the bag. If you I see the big tendency is to, to go this way. You bottom out behind the ball. You try to help it in the air, and you either hit behind it or you skull it. You have to hit down on it. 
you have to hit it like you would hit an eight iron in a full shot, down and through. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, there's my point right there. All right, that's exactly why we're doing this. The misses are better, all right? Middle East stance. Wait, just a little left to center. And skin that and look where it got to. Does this make sense to you? Yeah. I mean, think about it. If Even if there's a little bit of fringe or rough, I'm still going to beat your brains out doing this every time. Just because I'm going to hit this solid every time. So much easier, so much easier. Now, let's move back a little bit and talk about more loft when you have to. But it's the same principle. I still grip it like a putter. I uh, get the ball back in my stance just ever so slightly, again, to hit down on it. I'll hit an eight iron from right here. But all I'm trying to do is take the club that's just gonna carry the fringe and then run out on his own. Okay? It ain't real tough. Are you putting that at all to get the over spin on it? No, no, I'm not. It's not it's not it's not creating any backspin, very, very little but it's on such a low flight, it's scooting right up to the hole, okay? And that, again, if you take a lofted club, say if I even took a pitching wedge for here, I've got to carry it farther up the green, it's going to have more backspin on it, I've got to worry about the run out, plus it's, there's more room for error to miss hit the ball. Hey, I do this for a living, I can do it with a pitching wedge too. No, you know, but you understand the point. I'm not trying to hood it. You could, but there's no reason to. And again, you're using a putter grip. I'm using a putter grip. I use a putter grip how I, until I just don't feel comfortable. It's too big a swing. You know, if I have to go too hard, I go and, you know, grip it normally. Um, but the putter grip, to me, gets my hands to work more as a unit, and I don't cock as much. I think a lot of people cock too much. When you cock the club too much on a short shot, on a short shot, you have too much angle, and then you know you have too much hit on the ball. You know, y'all watch Steve Stricker's the best from around the green now, or one of the best, especially from 50 and 60 yards. Very stiff rested, isn't he? Kind of like this. Controls the club head, controls the speed, the speed, and does not have too much angle. Because if you have too much angle, you've got to get the angle out, don't you? If you don't, you're going to jam it into the ground. So. Less wrist cock and let it swing with the arms. Let's see, what if we had this little shot here and say it was nasty, rough, a little bit of rough or whatever, bad, bumpy in front of me. This is where it gets a little bit delicate. I've got a sand wedge right here. Could use a, let me see if I can hit it. Just carry the fringe, but it's gotta be hit perfectly and didn't do it, see? There's little shots around there. You know, sometimes it's just tough to get it close to the hole. You know the best shot I saw last year? The best shot, the shot of the year, was Mickelson's third shot of the 15th hole Saturday at Augusta. You remember that? He was this far over the back of the green, had four or five steps to work with, downhill, looking right at the water. So fast and hard you can't imagine. He took that big old 64 <laughs> left-handed up in the air, down there about four feet. Greatest shot I've ever seen. Can you I don't know if it's the smartest shot I've ever seen. <laughs> well, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't know for a fact it was a 64. I think it was. 64 degree wedge can hit you in the nose. But he has that ability. And F Phil likes the, dr the dramatic anyway, but he has that ability to be able to swing hard and shoot that thing straight up in the air. And, and I don't, nor do I'm going to try it. <laughs> Let 
more than likely I would never try to hit that shot. I would either putt it from here, maybe bump in a little seven iron through the rough, but, or through the fringe, but I don't like that shot anymore. I'd much rather just putt it. All right, let's go, uh, let's go to the other pin. Gosh, if I'm from here, I'm probably just gonna go back to the seven iron. And all it takes is just a little bit of practice on getting your distance with certain clubs and how far they run out. Just carry the fringe. I'm sure they did. Um, <laughs> versus taking a 58, and you see this all too often. If I took a 58, well, all I know is probably half of you guys and ladies, those people are in dire straits over there. <laughs> Hang loose, as they say. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about for a moment if the pin is back over here and we had to carry it to that back right portion there. Yes. Just momentum. It's, it's, you know, I get asked some of those questions and I don't have an answer because all that is is when you hit down and through, it's just going to stop there. It's just momentum where it stops. I mean, you want your, to get technical now, you want your weight on your left side of a little bit so you want to hit down and through the ball okay you want the ball pretty much in the middle of your stance and when you make contact you want those hands slightly ahead of the ball okay you don't want this action at all and as I said earlier you see a lot of the average player try to help the ball in the air and they hit behind it you got to keep the hands resist the ball in the air old pro heard him say that one time resist the ball in the air kind of and you'll hit it solid, and you have to hit this shot solid just like you have to hit that five iron out there. Because if you don't have this one solid, it's not going to carry the proper distance. It's not going to go the proper distance to the hole. Okay? So there's really not follow through, don't worry about it. The ball is gone. As long as those hands are leading, leading through, just depends on how big the swing is. No, that was just that I had the 58 in my hand. Yeah. But it's not, you know, you can have fun and learn by taking a 58 or an 8 iron and go hit shots from everywhere. This is unbelievable, this practice facility here. But you can have fun doing everything and try different shots. That's how you get your feel. You know, when you're a kid, that's how you, I learned this stuff when I was a kid by just goofing off, you know. So now if we have to go back, carry it to this back right hole location, I swear I wasn't going to do this to myself. But, um, you know, there's times you have to carry it up there. And it's, it's a risky shot. It's a tough shot, especially as we get older. Um, but the same principles as I just said. You've got to carry it farther, but you've still got to hit down and through. The hands have to be ahead. The shaft has to be leaning forward at impact. Weight has to be on the left side because you want to hit it with a descending blow. Now, how do you get it in the air? Well, you get it in the air by opening up the club face. Okay? But that, that, I only do that when it's absolutely necessary. I flipped at it, see? I hit it behind the ball and it ran out on me. You know, you see the guys on tour, the the best in my day, the guy I played against, was Tom Watson and Seve Ballesteros. As far as not just chipping the golf ball, but pitching the golf ball away from the green, taking a lofted club. They were fantastic. They, they had it, whatever it is, okay? Watson worked a lot on it, much like Phil Mickelson. Seve was just gifted. Seve had it, okay? Had a great imagination. Uh, nowadays, you know, Tiger is excellent. Most of them are pretty doggone good, but Tiger is excellent. But I still don't think he holds a, a candle to um, Phil Mickelson. 
Phil not only has all the shots, but I love the way he plays them. He plays very much, when you watch Phil hit the shot, say a shot like this, he's very much got his hands ahead of the ball like this, always doesn't let that club head pass. Very much that way, comes in low a lot and tries to make everything. But he likes to hit, you know, See, I hit behind that one too, but anyway. All right, if you got to go up a little bit more, I said, you know, if you got to go up and down quickly, now you're going to get dangerous. First, never happened at this <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got to have a decent lie to start with. If you have a tight lie, it's, it's very dangerous. You've got to put the ball up in your stance a little bit, open that club face wide open. The 58 and the 60 degree wedges have less bounce, which is good. And you just got to be precise. Open the club face up, wide open. Hands might be behind a little bit. And when you come through, the club has, head has got to pass the hands, but still bottom out under the ball. Okay? Let's try it. Well, it's just I'm trying to get the angle out, so I'm trying to kind of do that. Not going to happen quite like that because my tendency, I, I, that's kind of like my worst nightmare is I, my club goes like that, okay? But you just got to open it up, and I know everybody's always, when I get in the bunker here in just a second, open up the club face is scary to you, but all it is is creating more loft, 